I've tried fast Android devices before, many. The Retroid Pocket lineup offers great value for the dollar. The Odin 2 Portal, in my opinion, is the absolute undisputed king of performance in the ARM handheld arena. Tablets, however, can be easily overlooked. They're daily devices that many people use for the news, YouTube, or just simple web browsing. But what happens when you take the fastest ARM SoC to date and design a gaming tablet around it? This here is the Legion Y700 Gen 4, and it completely changed the way that I look at Android tablets. So let me take you on a tour of the fastest ARM device that I own and why I definitely think you should pick one up. So let's hop right in. This tablet is known by a few different names. The Legion Y700 Gen 4 or the 2025 model. To be clear, this is the latest version equipped with the formidable Snapdragon 8 Elite SoC, distinguishing it from the earlier Gen 3 or 2024 model that utilized a still potent SoC, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. The Gen 4 represents an audacious statement from Lenovo, a device that eschews from the mainstream to forge a new category, the Hyper Tablet. This is a flawed masterpiece, a device whose unparalleled performance is aimed squarely at the hardcore enthusiast willing to navigate its unique quirks. I picked this up on the AliExpress summer sale for 559 Canadian or around 400 US dollars. As far as accessories go, I didn't pick up anything with this tablet due to the price. However, I did want a screen protector on there and I'm happy to see that my Legion Go V1 tablet screen protector that I had an extra of fit perfectly. Pretty sure this was the light sensor was designed to fit, but it doesn't really bother me and I'm happy that I got a screen protector on there. I'll leave the link to the seller that I bought it from down below, but this one is the Chinese ROM. It comes in a very small but professionally looking box with just about everything that you need to get started. Of course you get the tablet. You also get a SIM ejection tool so you can add a micro SD card to it. You get a nice USB-C to USB-C cable. It also comes with an instruction manual but mine is in Chinese. The only other thing you get in the box is a 68 watt fast charger. Pretty nice to see as most devices you don't really include a power adapter anymore. First impressions of the tablet are incredible. This is the highest quality Android device that I've seen to date. Fantastic build quality, solid metal casing, and a strong glass front. The entire device feels very solid. Another thing that I was surprised to see is just how small this tablet is and how thin it is too. The premium feel of the metal and glass construction exceeds that of any other high-end Android device that I've used. The physical characteristics are remarkable, measuring 208.54 millimeters tall, 129.46 millimeters wide, and just 7.6 millimeters thick with a weight of only 350 grams. The key takeaway here is its exceptional portability, making it comfortable for one-handed use whether it's reading or gaming on the go. On the right side, we have the volume rocker up at the top, followed by the power button. There's also a small microphone hole and one down on the bottom. In the middle on the right side, you have the micro SD card slot. This is where you're gonna need that SIM ejection tool. On the top and the bottom, we get two very loud Dolby Atmos certified speakers. On the bottom, we find a USB 2, primarily for charging. However, on the side, we find a USB 3.2 Gen 2 capable of 10 gigabits per second data transfer and crucially, DisplayPort 1.4 output. Due to the small yet light size, it's easy to pick up and use. It's also light enough that you don't really feel it in your wrists while holding it. One critique I have here is the design is all metal. It is pretty slippery to hold on to, especially in a dry environment. Either way, I really like the size and the portability factor. This makes it very easy to slip into your bag or even large pockets. However, since it is metal, it does pick up a lot of fingerprints. The panel was one thing that I noticed immediately. It's vibrant, bright, 
and very good all around. This is an IPS screen, but a very good one at that. The 8.8 inch display is a technical marvel in terms of speed and sharpness. This boasts a stunning 3K resolution of 3040 by 1904 pixels, a significant upgrade over the 2560 by 1600 panel of the previous generation. This high resolution combined with the 100% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage and Dolby Vision support is what produces the vivid and rich colors that I'm seeing. Brightness is decent even in an outdoor setting, peaking at a respectable 600 nits. While I have seen brighter panels, this is really good for an IPS screen, and I've yet to find myself wishing for a brighter panel all round. Pretty solid. The screen, however, does have one flaw to it. Vignetting. You can see some dark vignetting in the corners and on the edges. It's kind of unfortunate, but despite that, it really hasn't even bothered me much. The screen will also go up to 165Hz, but it has a pretty useful feature. Setting this to intelligent lets you auto adjust the refresh rate on the go, meaning better battery life when you're just sitting there reading a book or watching a YouTube video. It'll just adjust it as needed and you likely won't even notice it switch. Despite knowing this and watching for it, I haven't felt the refresh rate change in me once. Without a doubt, this is the smoothest Android screen that I've seen, bar none. You can actually see the refresh rate change. When you go to the UFO test, it'll immediately start at 144, then go down to 60. The choice of an IPS panel over OLED is telling, while competitors are quickly adopting OLED for its superior contrast and true blacks. Lenovo has made a calculated compromise. An OLED panel would undoubtedly be more expensive, especially at this niche size and high refresh rate. The primary audience of the hardcore gaming enthusiast often prioritizes raw refresh rate and response times, and OLED is also more susceptible to the risk of burn-in. By opting for the top tier 165Hz IPS panel, Lenovo is delivering a performance metric that matters most to its target user, while keeping the device affordable. It's a decision that kind of favors gaming prowess over media consumption perfection. This is one I really struggled with. Yes, it's the most powerful Android device that I own and the fastest one that I've seen yet. The Snapdragon 8 Elite SoC is not just an incremental update. It's the absolute pinnacle of ARM performance in a consumer tablet today. My model comes equipped with 12GB of LPDDR5X memory, which is extremely quick and 256 gigabytes of UFS 4.1 storage. So yeah, boot speeds are pretty crazy. It only takes about three seconds from a cold boot. That's absolutely crazy. Let me show you how fast it starts in real time. This won't take long and make sure not to blink. Okay, let's start it up. And there you go. Have you ever seen an Android device boot that fast? That's just incredible. The nice thing about this year's model is being able to use a micro SD card. I went ahead and put a 512 gigabyte Team Group micro SD card, which ranked near the top of my list in terms of benchmark, a befitting micro SD card for a top tier tablet. Benchmark scores were also quite frankly insane compared to the next two fastest devices that I own. The Snapdragon G3X Gen 2 in the Ioneo Pocket Ace was the closest thing that I have, but this thing nearly doubled it in Vulcan performance. The Antutu for the Y700 Gen 4 is a staggering 2.7 million, dwarfing the 1.96 million of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 model, and the 1.3 million of the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 version, showcasing massive generational leaps in power. Compared to the other devices that I own, this thing is like night and day. This device is truly next gen and it shows in benchmarks. However, the immense power comes at a cost, heat and energy consumption. To manage this somewhat, Lenovo has implemented its thermal system, featuring a massive 12,000 mm squared vapor chamber. Yet, the data reveals a fascinating story about the Y700's performance tuning. 
When tested against other Snapdragon 8 Elite tablets, the Y700 Gen 4 draws significantly more power in identical tests, consuming upwards of 9.8 watts, compared to its competitors 6.2 watts. It's not really a flaw in the chip, but an aggressive power profile set by Lenovo. The tablet has been engineered to run hot to extract every last drop of performance. These temperatures can reach upwards of 50 degrees Celsius under load. This drag racer philosophy makes it an oversized cooling system an absolute necessity to support its performance at all cost strategy. This tablet maxed out every emulation situation I've thrown at it. I could show you a lot of different emulation on here but it's able to do everything. Anything available to Android for emulation wise is available on this tablet. The Snapdragon 8 Elite handles the most demanding titles with ease. For sixth generation consoles like the PlayStation 2 and GameCube and Wii, the experience has been flawless. The Snapdragon 8 Elite handles even the most demanding titles with ease allowing for significant resolution scaling and texture pack enhancements without frame drops. The true test, however, lies in modern Android gaming. Android games all played maxed out with flawless frame rates. This statement holds pretty true across the board, but in some cases the tablet can get a little hot. Starting up a game lets us access a few different types of menus. On the left side, you're going to see this little pullout bar. This is the game overlay, so it allows us to customize a few different things. We can see the network latency over here as well as the floating display option. There's also a few other options on this menu, like recording and bypass charging, as well as key mapping. There's also AI sound enhancements, voice changer, acceleration, and all sorts of things. However, what I find really interesting is these different modes. These different power options are pretty interesting. So energy saving mode will allow the CPU to go down to about 1.4 GHz with the GPU clocked down to about 342 MHz. Balance mode kicks it up again with the CPU going up to 2.25 GHz and the GPU going up to around 900 MHz. Balance mode is really a good ideal spot for good temperature and good battery life, even on the most demanding Android game, Subnautica. I'm getting a solid 95 FPS with the highest graphical settings. This SoC is no joke. Even underwater, I'm still getting a solid frame rate. This is just an incredible piece of tech. Moving up even more to performance mode, this is where things get really interesting. The CPU can go all the way over 4 GHz, and the GPU is now all the way up to 1 GHz. This is why this tablet is so powerful. This is the fastest CPU I have ever seen in an Android device, and it really shows on games like this. Having this much graphical horsepower in Android really shows that these games are designed for lower end hardware, even the best AAA games like Subnautica. Simply put, the graphical settings on this device just don't go high enough to support the hardware that's available. Obviously, we aren't maxing out the 120Hz, but I personally would just recommend using Balance Mode. Balance Mode lets the GPU go up to its near full boost clock, but the CPU isn't wasting excess energy. We don't really need 4GHz plus on a lot of these games, so Balance Mode works great. I actually tried some PC emulation on here. I couldn't really get anything running. I don't know if that's because of the drivers that are available to the Snapdragon 8 Elite, but every other emulation that I tried on here works perfectly fine. The Y700's raw power makes many popular titles playable at full speed, a feat lesser chips cannot manage. We also have an ample 12 or 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X. This type of hardware provides developers with a higher performance ceiling to target, encouraging optimizations that, in turn, improve the experience for all users. Simply put, I was able to run every single Android game that I threw at it. There are a few oddities though. Wreckfest unfortunately is just one game that doesn't seem to start up. I'm not sure why, but it just immediately crashes. With heavy titles working in balance mode, lighter titles can even go down much lower. This device does a really good job at saving energy where it can. 
In fact, even the energy saving mode can still get some pretty decent performance. Even with no FPS cap in game, if you're using energy saving mode, it does limit the FPS in the game to 30 FPS. This could be a good way to save some energy on stuff that doesn't have a lot of movement. For games like Dead Cells, I probably would still use the balance mode. Even some super heavy Android titles like Zenless Zone Zero are absolutely no match for the processor in this device. In fact, on this game, we can completely max out the settings. This game will only go up to 60 FPS, but everything else can be maxed out. Again, in balance mode, we're getting a solid 60 FPS. Absolutely fantastic gaming performance on this tablet. Aside from PC emulation, when it becomes a little bit more stable, I really can't see a reason to go up to that high performance mode. This device actually had quite a lot of bloat to it. So it did take some time to uninstall and remove everything I wasn't using. This is running the Chinese ROM, which does support English, but hopefully we get a global release eventually because this is a fantastic tablet. The ZUI operating system is based on Android 15, and it's a classic double-edged sword. It offers a powerful, gamer-centric focus, like with the Legion Zone. I'm unable to use a lot of the apps because they're all in Chinese. Lenovo's resources are focused on its primary Chinese market, and the software reflects this. So how's the streaming on the Y700 Gen 4? It's pretty good. In YouTube, we can go all the way up to 4K with HDR. This represents a pretty clear picture of what this tablet is also designed to do well. Streaming. For me, I wanted this device specifically for games, and I also wanted it for movies and reading books, and it does all three of these extremely well. The Y700 Gen 4 also has DRM support, so you can watch all your favorite movies and TV shows on the go. The brightness is pretty decent as well, so it still lets you enjoy your shows with near perfect accuracy, and the colors look great. If you're looking to watch Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Crunchyroll, Prime Video, I think you'll be pretty impressed with this little tablet. This tablet also has a desktop mode, and it does exactly what you expect. It's kind of a hard feature to show off. Essentially, when you plug this into a TV or monitor, you get an actual start bar down on the bottom and a full desktop interface. It's pretty neat. If you're interested in learning more about desktop mode available on this tablet, maybe I can make a separate video for that. Let me know down below if you'd be interested in seeing that. There's something else that I want to touch on in this, and that's of course reading. I think the size makes it a perfect tablet for reading your favorite comics or books on the go. The page size is about accurate to what you're going to see for a lot of real books, and the battery life is also excellent here as well. On the pull down menu, there's also a sub mode called reading mode. This gives the pages kind of an e-reader color to them, and it looks really good for reading. Personally, if you were to buy this for reading, I think it's a little overkill, but that's half the fun, isn't it? Lastly, I thought we could talk about the speakers. They are, without a doubt, the best speakers I have ever seen on an Android device, far surpassing any of the handhelds that I own. We get punchy bass, and the treble is very clean. There's no distortion whatsoever, even at some of the higher volume levels. In general, I don't use this over 60%, and it's still extremely loud at those volumes. Ultimately, the Legion Y700 Gen 4 is not a tablet for the masses. It's a specialized, uncompromising tool built for the bleeding edge. It demands more from its owner, more patience with the software, especially with this Chinese ROM. For the casual user, seeking a simple media device, the iPad mini or a simple Samsung tablet might be a better choice. But the ideal buyer, the emulation enthusiast, the hardcore mobile gamer or a tech tinkerer, the Y700 Gen 4 delivers a level of power and possibly that is, for now, simply unmatched in a device of its size. It's truly a special piece of hardware that has earned its place as the uncrowned king of compact performance in this new category, the Hyper Tablet. But let me know what you think of the Y700 Gen 4 in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.